if you have the patience to listen i'm sure that you will go out of this room with something in your mind and that is our attempt here today is to provoke some thought in you regarding yourself we're not here to say something about the examination because that's more or less there in the handouts that have been supplied to you so i just begin with a quote that swami vivekananda once said that he can give away 100 of people who are in their old age just to make friends with one young man or a woman what the great mind actually meant by it is youth is power and we just celebrated the national youth day also you all are at that juncture of your life when a decision made by you at this point would shape your entire life you also have a lot of energy in you and this energy would help you to carve new niche for yourself what i mean by this is see there are two kinds of life that any person goes through one is his personal life and the second one is the professional life clear i can also bifurcate it in the form of a material life and a non material life but that would take me somewhere in metaphysical discussions i don't want to go there but i would just stick myself to this kind of bifurcation where you have a professional life and a personal life a personal life is private you know and no one has the right to infringe upon it but when come when it comes to your professional life how you carry out your profession not only determines where you would be but also would somewhere decide how the society prospers how the society moves forward see stagnation is death you have to keep moving some of you must be thinking that after i graduate from this uh, college i would go into some service and your aim is to serve the nation ultimately in whatever capacity you can and i know that all of you somewhere in your heart love the country but what do you mean by loving the country loving the country means loving its people and how do you love how do you love your mother how do you love your father by serving them is the best way to express love is to serve and when i say serve i don't mean servitude i mean it's care and affection i'm talking about compassion and love that is a kind of service that anyone would like to have even you would like to have that from others love compassion care a lot of pampering maybe right that is what you actually desire in your life so if you have the capability and the authority to serve the entire public imagine the kind of satisfaction that you would draw from it suppose you go into a job you make hefty sums and you come back to your home you have all the assets that are necessary for a luxurious life maybe at the end at after some time you'll feel a dead end within yourself you'll feel that you have got all the material assets but when it comes to your ideas when it comes to your thoughts they are at a dead end they are not progressing enough because you are into a mundane job from 9 to 5 you go to a office you work suppose i am uh, supposing this that most of you are uh, in the are you all chemistry graduates most of you okay so whatever be your field of knowledge you do that job you return back suppose you are a doctor you go to a hospital you serve people you come back that's a good job to have but imagine when you have also the authority of deciding how medical research should be oriented you are the person who actually lay the foundations of the medical policy of the country 
it would be a lot more satisfying when you would see that you can extend your help to the needy it would help you it will engender some sort of satisfaction in you that would be beyond anything it means what i want to say is there are some jobs where just you do the duty and come back while there are jobs where you work for something to achieve maybe money or position but then there is a job where you actually serve the nation and serving the nation means serving the people of the nation irrespective of their caste creed color race religion you look at them as people as human beings and being women you understand all of you have the general gift of compassion and empathy so you can understand the pain and you can really make a difference and how do you do that who can make a difference in a society it is actually the political class that can make a difference in a society that's why you call them leaders right but who actually decides the policy maybe the politicians are only the face it is the bureaucrats that actually define the policy and the shape they shape the how a nation should progress it is the ias officers the ips officers the revenue officers the foreign services officers the forest services officers that actually carry the burden of the nation on their shoulders by their good work and with their good intention clear so how do i get into these services and what do i have to do once i get into these services can i really make a difference all these are different kind of questions that maybe somewhere it might be igniting in your minds right now let me give you a very brief introduction on this i hope all of you have heard about the union public service commission right it's a constitutional body right it conducts every year an examination that is known as the civil services examination the civil services examination is conducted in two stages the first stage is a preliminary examination which is just a kind of uh, you are picking up and the marks obtained is not counted for merit is just a kind of separating the cream from the rest that's your preliminary examination and then you have the mains examination which is again bifurcated into two parts first is a written examination and second is your personality test which often aspirants call as the upsc interviews clear yeah. it is this mains examination and the personality test in which whatever marks you score is actually taken into account for your merit depending upon your merit you are allotted different services and these services range from the administrative services to some of the central services like audits accounts etc railway services wherever you go you have the authority of changing the lives of people for example if you are into the forest services and you feel that suppose you are posted in assam and you feel that in kaziranga national park the rhinos the rhinoceros they are being poached poaching is illegal hunting right they are being poached and being a student of science suppose you understand or say life sciences you understand what is the purpose of biodiversity biodiversity is perhaps it's inextricably linked to our survival like if i say on this earth if the earth is a spaceship all of us are crew none of us are passengers there is no free ride for us because everything else is connected to everything else it means that even if you take a small insect out of the ecosystem maybe the entire ecosystem can collapse but how to protect that ecosystem one way is to write about it 
another way is to agitate about it all this would only create the preconditions to act who will act it is the politicians who will act on the advice of the bureaucrats so ultimately it's your action that would determine what would be the future of the rhino suppose you are a district magistrate and you are posted in a district where there the pension funds or the midday meal scheme there's a scam in it people can agitate about it journalists may write about it politicians may do politics about it but who can correct it is the bureaucrats who can actually correct it they can really rectify the situation and save lives they are the people who can make the difference it is the bureaucrat lobby that finally decides how the politicians would act clear suppose you are an ips officer right and you are posted in a district which suffers from recursive communal riots it's the first day in your office you go to the office suddenly the phone rings your pa comes up to you and says that sir or madam that this district has been affected by communal riots there is outbreak of communal riots people are destroying property there is killing all around across the roads please do something the media can again report the journalist can debate though they all have important roles to play i'm saying they all create the preconditions to act who will act who will take the decision it is the ips officer who will actually take the decision what to do maybe he'll call a peace committee where he'll invite all the elders of different communities who are currently engaged in hostility then they would ask them to appeal to the general public to maintain calm and peace so in total what i wanted to say is bureaucracy is actually the steel frame of the country it not only gives you immense pleasure of serving the people and the nation but it also gives you immense pride in yourself when you sleep every day you close your eyes you understand you have done something good for the country if you are an honest officer and abide by the rules and follow the provisions of the constitution with empathy compassion and you really hold the preamble of the country to loftiest heights where it deserves to be held really it would give you immense pleasure in your heart that you have really made a difference civil services examination is that examination through which bureaucrats are recruited why this is the just the right time for all of you to at least think about that examination nearly 11 lakh candidates filled the forms last year and only 100 were chosen as ias officers maybe a thousand as fine in the final list this shows the intense competition it is the mother of all examinations it is the toughest examination in entire asia it selects the cream of the society it selects the best minds there are doctors engineers from aims iits everywhere the best minds phd scholars all fighting for it right and fighting not only to secure a selection but also to leave an imprint on the examination what do i mean by that that all of you all of them who want, who compete for this examination they want to carve a niche for themselves they want to leave some memory for example they want to uh, get selected as the first rank holder in the examination so there is intense competition and the competition with time is only increasing gone are the days when you would pick up some books you will read and there would be some redundant questions which are often asked in the examination and you would just answer them i'll give you a situation for example suppose you are a district magistrate all of you please imagine this you all are a district magistrate and in your district there is an epidemic you understand an epidemic 
right? There is an epidemic and children below five are languishing. They are dying because of it. And the death toll is almost uncontrollable. Suddenly, a scientist comes and he says that, Madam, I have, uh, I have created a drug and I believe that it can fight the disease. Clear? But he says that there is very less time to test it and it has to be tested on a child. Clear? And within 48 hours after the drug is injected into the child, the blood of the child has to be extracted. And then it has to be mixed with some chemicals further and then that blood has to be injected in every child so that no child further languishes. But the child to whom in the first place the drug would be injected would perish, would die. But all other children would definitely survive. He claims it. What would you do? What would you do? Will you allow all the children to die and be a mute spectator and look at it? Or will you put the life of one child online so that everyone else can survive? It's a dilemma. It's a dilemma in your mind. A meek or a weak mind would generally find an escape route. Chutti lekar chale jaoge kahin. Right? But a strong mind would definitely decide what to do. And how to decide it? For example, how to decide it? There are two ways of looking at the situation. One is if you see that your action does greatest good to the greatest number of people. You can judge an action by that. That, that if you do an action that benefits most number of people, hence it's a good action. You can think of something like that. But there's a counter argument which would say that if you do that, it means you consider only about the result. You consider only about the end. The means does not matter to you. How do you achieve that end? These are the kind of situations now UPS is putting the students to. By introducing a paper, say the GS4 or the ethics paper at the mains writing stage. Clear? You learn about not only the history of the country, the culture of the country, its geography, its economy, right? its political arrangement, but how ethical governance can help you in making the country a better country. Clear? So this examination gives you the opportunity to learn and to act. While in many places, you get the opportunity to learn and to act, but that action may not be such far-reaching. Here, the action can transform lives and transform lives for all times to come. For example, if you pass a legislation, if you pass a legislation where you declare, so I hope all of you are aware of issues like surrogacy, right? It is in on rampage now in the country, especially uh, foreign couples, they would come to the country and they would go for a surrogate mother. Now suppose you are a district magistrate and a surrogate mother comes to you and says that tomorrow is my delivery for the baby. But during these nine months when I kept the baby in my womb, I kind of, uh, there emerged a kind of affection between me and the baby. And I don't want to give that baby away. How do you react to that? Do you understand? Because on one hand, there are rights of the couple and it was more or less an agreement. Right? And on the other hand, there is motherly love. It's very difficult for you to decide. Maybe a surrogacy law which would address such kind of situation can be carved by you. It would be shaped by you. How people pay their taxes? In India, you know, most of the people do not pay their taxes. I'll give you a, a fact that nearly 
of the people in India, those who are under the tax net, actually pay the taxes? Why don't you pay the taxes? Is this some sort of distortion in your behavior? Maybe not. Why you pay the taxes? You pay the taxes because to get something in return from the state. Right? You want roads. You want good bridges. You want all those kind of things. Understanding this? But maybe that's not available. They are not coming in that number. So what do you decide? That suppose you are giving some money to a friend and you think that the money, the friend would do some thing in return to you, but the friend is not doing that. There would be a point when you would just evade it. You would not give the money any longer. Maybe. Who is at the fault? Is the people at the fault? No. Maybe the state is erring. And why the state is erring? We do not have good number of young bureaucrats who are really dedicated and passionate about this examination. See, if you want to earn money, don't go for it. Don't waste your time. If you want to do it for position, don't go for it. Don't waste your time. Because there are much more things. Become Mukesh Ambani, you'll get more money, more position. If you really want to do something for the country, go for it. Go for it. There is nothing better than this. Clear? So with that, I would rest my words. I would also invite sir to speak something. Right? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, <coughs> Mr. Shankar. I start from where he has left. I welcome you to the arena of this UPSC examination. I assume it, I take it as granted that you have decided <coughs> to take this exam, <coughs> which he said is a difficult exam. I would say <coughs> you need not have anything. You should have the will to win, nothing else. You say, sir, we have been listening these words from our class one. Yes. I have been a teacher for almost 40 years. And I have seen boys and girls doing wonders. There are some of my students, I salute them because they took it this pledge that they have to do it. You must have heard those famous words of the former president of United States of America, Barack Obama, yes, we can. You have to also write in your copies, yes, I can and I will. The second thing, <clears throat> What you need is your determination. Think, no matter whatever the odds, there are many odds. You are prevented, you are hampered at every stage. The first stage is that you are a woman. The whole world history has been against women. But they have fought their way to come on top. And so, you need more determination than the boys. But once you decide, 
the whole world is on your feet. But decide. Be determined. No matter what may come, what may go, you decide that yes, I can and I will. The third thing, I always say that you have to be focused. What this focus means, everybody says, and you also say, Sir, uh, we have been focusing on different things. How could you just focus? Remember, in the Swayambar Sabha, there were many competitors. There was Arjun also. <clears throat> competitors were asked, what you are seeing? Oh, there is a fish, there is this wall, and there is that. When Arjun was asked, he said, I am seeing nothing else but the eye of the fish. Once you decide that you have to appear for the UPSC exams, think UPSC, drink UPSC, eat UPSC, sleep UPSC, live UPSC. You would say, sir, what else then is in life? No, 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 no. You will not be studying alone. You must have hobbies. Pursue the hobby. In the UPSC interview, I faced it. <laughs> so, the most regular and consistent question is, about your hobby. Have any hobby. You can say, Sir, my hobby is to gossip. Are you wrong? You can gossip for hours, for hours, for hours. But go for the great gossipers who can gossip for 16 days together. You must have heard about Lord Lytton, a great gossip. You must have heard about Glasnost and Perestroika. The father of this Perestroika and Glasnost was a great gossiper. Great gossip. So, in fact, this is the age, this is the prime age when you have to love someone, be loved from someone, you have to play, you have to entertain, all these things are there and you have to do all these things. You should have a hobby. I don't say that you must have a hobby, but people in their lives, some has a hobby of philately, some has a hobby of <coughs> seeing the cinema or movies. Some has a hobby of drawing, reading novels, writing novels, writing stories, writing poetry. What's the harm in it? You must have heard the Odia poet who is an, was an IS officer now retired, but you can pursue your hobby with all the kind of preparation. I'll do it. Since you are focused, make a routine, but follow that routine. You always set an alarm on your watch that buzzes at 5 o'clock in the morning Oh, there is so cold and it is shivering. How can I just wake up right now at this moment? That's it. This is not determination. This exam is
is a kind of daria ye ishq nahi aasan ek aag ka daria hai aur doob ke jana the lady who wrote this urdu novel akadarya lived in lakhnow pura tula in haider i made it a point to meet her that i'll definitely meet her some day and i just took an appointment from her i simply asked how much time you took to write this novel she said 11 years probably you know tolstoy the russian novelist there is a novel anna karenina he wrote it 15 times a book of 1100 pages if you determine if you just decide you can do it nothing is impossible for human beings and nothing is impossible for an woman at least yes they have faced many impediments they have faced serious blocks you have to face this patriarchal bargain you give something you get something but <clears throat> there is nothing that you cannot change so when i say that you have a routine you make a routine you have time for entertainment you have time for going to the market you have time for window shopping you have time just read novels books make it a point to read something extra that's a must not only your courses it gives you the idea of what the world is where we are going if human life is being actualized if the human values are being followed or they are being eroded i'll just simply quote one lady martha nussbaum probably have not heard about her she is a british <coughs> scholar she said as to shankar said you have to have a social concern it is the lower species they live for themselves man is the beautiful most beautiful creation of that almighty you have to think for others also and so there comes a job of duty a job of fulfilling obligations and a job where you can do something for society and this is the whole arena of upsc you have don't ever suffer from three things one is victimhood oh i cannot do it because i am a woman no you can do it never suffer from this deprivation i do not have the money to buy books i do not have the money to attend the best of the coachings i do not have this and i do not have that no you can do everything if you are determined probably you have heard about that olympic champion with one hand his right hand was not there 
and he came with the left hand and owned the medal. So nothing can impede the sheer determination, the sheer will to win. One thing I would say and I request must make a work plan. Those who aspire to go for UPSC for almost one or two years, they almost yander on the streets of Delhi, on the doors of the coaching institutes, on the this uh, uh, registration forms of the coaching institutes. No, you must talk to your friends who have done it, who are preparing for it, and plan, plan <coughs> that exam. Three things I would suggest at the beginning. Number one, make a habit of reading the newspaper Hindu. You say, sir, how, how, this is this tough paper. No, this is not a tough paper. Since we have decided to go to this fire, the ocean of fire, must. Number two, study all the 10 plus NCRT books. <laughs> Life science, political science, political system of India, economy of India, all those books. And number three, decide for your optionals. I come from Bihar. There are some people who say that in Bihar a child learns first UPSC and then learns A or B or C. There are reasons for it. I'm a student of sociology. <coughs> Since there were no options in industry, agriculture, professions, and expertise, they're left with no choice but the administrative services. They excelled. I say you excel by choice. <coughs> you excel by <coughs> Decide your main examination papers at this time itself. What you choose? Many people, uh, sir, let me first compete in this, uh, this was the barrier of UPSC prelims. No, that's wrong. When they appear in the month of June, and they feel that, no, 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 on the basis of the cutoff marks, I am just going to appear in the mains examinations. And then they decide, no, 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 I should take geography, I should take political science. No, 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 this is, this is bad, this is difficult. I should rather take this uh, Hindi or English. Now, you have to decide right now that... <coughs> Your optionals would be this. Decide it and go for it. Go for it. But, but you remember that <coughs> your current affairs, that's why I said Hindu with a social concern must know about National Health Commission. That's a bill being proposed by the government of India in place of Indian Medical Council Act. Must read about it. You are saying, sir, are, this is the time when we should, are, Baba, who has prevented you from moving around all the markets and just doing window, window shopping? Have some time for that also. But make the routine and that would take you to a long way. Nothing can stop you from <coughs> just <coughs> getting into your aspirations and fulfilling your aspirations. 
I think I've taken much of your time. There are people from Lukman Institute. <clears throat> but rather, I would ask you and appeal you to ask whatever questions, since in the beginning, Tirthankar said that this is an interactive session. And I definitely want, we want, that you should ask your questions that, sir, what can be the answer for this? Thank you very much. Before I invite questions from you, as sir said something about victimhood, let me share a story with you, a very short story with you. What is this victimhood? Victimhood means, why me? Why with me? Or why only me? Right? That is victimhood. You declare it. Right? That's victimhood. You see, there was a man, have you heard about him? Arthur Ashe. Have you heard about him? Arthur Hashe. He is the first black man to win the Wimbledon. Wimbledon is the premier tennis tournament. There are <coughs> four of them. Wimbledon is the prime most. Right. So he's the first man to win the Wimbledon. He had a huge fan following. Maybe something like Virat Kohli or something. He had a huge fan following in his days. Right. Once, he was diagnosed in a medical health care center and it was found that he was suffering from AIDS, which happened to him due to transfusion of blood. When he was injured, he took some blood and that blood was contaminated with HIV positive virus and he acquired that disease. His entire career shattered in front of his eyes. He was at his prime. Everything shattered. There's nothing to look else for. Immediately, those were not the days of Twitter and your Facebook or so other social media platforms, but those were the days of true fans. So, in his mailbox started pouring letters after letters. And every letter would say that, Arthur, we feel sorry for you. Some would say that uh, we hope that in the next life, those who believe in next life, that you attain some sort of peace. Some would simply write that don't get disappointed. There is still more hope for you. I mean, some letters would be optimistic. Some letters would be pessimistic. What is the similarity between an optimist and a pessimist? Both of them are away from reality, right? There came a letter, and Arthur would simply read those letters, but never would respond to any of them. But one fine morning, he picked the letter, and there was two words. Arthur, why you? Why not me? Why you got the disease? Why not me? God must have done great justice to me if he inflicted that pain in place of you on me. Why not me? Arthur, that day, decided to write to his fan. He wrote a letter. And he wrote, and I quote, he said, nearly 16,000 students or schoolboys and girls, they start playing lawn tennis in the United States of America. Out of this 16,000, Nearly 2,000 make it to the national level tennis tournaments. Of these 2,000, only 200 can give the trials for a Grand Slam. Of these 200, only 4 get the opportunity to represent United States of America in a Grand Slam. And of these 4, there is perhaps only 2 who get the opportunity to play a final if it's an America versus all America final? Only two. And of that, there is only one who emerges as the winner. So when I was holding that Wimbledon trophy in the center court in London, and people were cheering for me, Arthur, Arthur, 
I did not ask to God, God, why me? Why not anyone else? Why should I ask him today, why me? You understand this? Don't play this card of victimhood. It's very popular to play the card of victimhood. <laughs> Don't do that. Rather, you start working. As sir said, it was an enlightening speech by sir. So you just start working. And any queries regarding Lukman IS, you can meet Mr. Navneet. He would handle all the queries, right? And now I invite questions from you. Please feel free to ask. So if anybody wants to know about Lukeman IS, they can visit their website. It is written in the prospectus, which you have been given. So if anybody having any query now can ask. Now we are winding up, okay? So NSSRs you'll get from these two girls. Please be seated for five to ten minutes. Thank you.